Hi, this is Dr. Wade Nelly. I'm the founder and the clinic director of the IV Solutions Method, which is a comprehensive functional health care delivery system. Today, I'd like to teach you about viruses. We are in the midst of a pandemic, and what I notice out there in the world when I'm going out buying my supplies and food is that people are not eating the right foods to help them prepare for their immune system to be strong enough or to enhance their immune system to be strong enough to hopefully fend off a virus or a viral attack. So having said that, I'd like to let you know that I have a disclaimer here because if I don't, I might get in big trouble. So the information here provided by myself, Dr. Wade Binley, or the IB Solutions Method lectures are for informational purposes only. Our video lecture services are not meant to be a substitute for medical care given by a medical physician because I'm not a medical physician. The information provided by the IB Solutions Method or Dr. Wade Binley, that's me, is not meant to help in the diagnosis, prognosis, or treatment of a disease or any illness. If asked for medical advice, the IB Solutions lectures, lectures Dr. and myself, Dr. Wade Binley, reserves the right to withhold a response. There, there's the disclaimer, so let's get to teaching because doctor does mean teacher. Hippocrates said, he is the father of medicine long ago, let, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. So what, how does that relate to this viral uh, pandemic? Uh, well, it does a lot, but first of all, we need to learn about viruses and what they are and how they spread through our body. And then what are the, tr the uh, weak points that the viruses has that food can actually interfere with their uh, abilities to spread and to take over your genetic material so that they can replicate inside of our cells. And they are a form, I call them a little parasite without a body. So first thing to know is that viruses have four basic parts to it. They have uh, two types of what we call spike proteins, or five basic parts, two, uh, two types of spike proteins, uh, one and two. One's bigger, the blue one's bigger, which is more important for now. It has a capsid, which is the actual circular protein uh, around it, so protective. And it's got the nuclear capsid that protects the inside from the outside of the capsid. So that protects what we call single-stranded RNA, which is the genetic material. It also has little enzymes in there as well. So <clears throat> there's basically five, five steps or six steps to this process. Uh, this blue line here, this light blue line here, or green line, it, it represents a cell. So cells are big, viruses are small here. And this red stuff here is a receptor. And it's, uh, in, the, in this particular case, it's uh, called an ACE2 receptor. And these ACE2 receptors, the virus is like because they can attach to them and then they can do their thing. So the first step a viral infestation is actually called docking or an attachment. And it's done with these big blue spike proteins. These spike proteins come in like this, they hold in, it's, they secure it into your cell. And then what happens is step two, which is the release of single-stranded RNA. You know, this single-stranded RNA actually is very, very smart. It comes into our, our cells after it's released so this stuff is, this little guy here, this single strand of RNA is coming through here and it gets secreted into the cell. Then it finds something called a ribosome, which is a, an organ in our cell that actually codes uh, for proteins and hormones in our body. So our cells need all this stuff to function and enzymes. So what happens is it hijacks this ribosome and there's lots of different ribosomes in our body, in our cells, and it makes single standard RNA. So after it hijacks that, it's taken over this process here, it makes two things. It makes many different types of proteins called polyproteins. And you can see that they're color coordinated for the purple, which is the nuclear capsid. It makes uh, a blue one is actually the spike proteins two, and the black one is the spike protein one, and then we'll call this the capsid, which is the green turquoise green or blue uh, capsid around the nuclear capsid. And then the second thing it does, it actually 
will make more of itself. So it, it makes more the single-stranded RNA by a process of overtaking and make an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is probably too much for you to understand. But anyway, we're, we're doing this here to get the idea of how this all comes together. So over here, I'll just review the steps again. We got step one, which is the docking procedure here on the cell membrane, many different names for that. Step two, the release of the single-stranded RNA. Step three, translation, which is the hijacked part of the cell, making polyproteins and more RNA. Step four is the activation process. So what happens with all these proteins is they need an enzyme. So this uh, enzyme then is secreted and they're called protein aces. So each one of these uh, colors here, the purple, the blue, the black, and the turquoise actually have a specific protein ace that's dedicated to them so that way they can do what? Well, what they do is very interesting. They actually recombine themselves into more viruses. And you can see over here that we have a whole new family or generation of viruses from one. One gets sacrificed and multiple viruses are made from one. So the return on the investment then for the virus is to get in there and use your genetic material by hijacking it. And then what happens is that the viruses releases themselves. They release out of the cell and they influence and infect other cells. Well, <clears throat> this, is, this is where it gets interesting when, uh, with what you can do with your diet, essentially. And you can find all of these things that I'm going to talk about in the next phase of this video series. And this is how nature's compounds actually have a specific purpose in here to reduce the spread and the docking mechanisms within the cell and on top of the cell that actually prevent the viruses from holding on to your cell and then translating all this information to make new cells. The problem is if one cell is infected, then there's a whole new ball of wax there. And this is how this virus gets very, very active in your body, or a virus, excuse me, gets active in your body. But concerning the COVID-19 SARS-2, then this one affects um, <clears throat> your cells in the end of your lungs called the alveoli. And there's two different types of cells there. And this, this particular one has an affinity for a spe special um, alveolar pneumocyte that actually is designed to keep your lungs expanded. So if this gets attacked, the cells then die because they're damaged, they ain't coming back. Your immune system goes in there and tries to clean it up and then there's a, a negative effect. And this causes, uh, this causes the acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, for the COVID-19 SARS-2 situation. So the next video here, which I'm going to erase all of this, and then I'm going to do the connection between what food groups and what that have these special compounds in there and what these compounds do to each one of these steps. So if you want, like this information, I'd like you to actually just sub subscribe down below so hit the, the the subscribe button and there'll be uh, more videos coming out regarding uh, how you can support and impress your immune system so that you have a, a lower likelihood of becoming infected with bacteria worms parasites viruses or what have you so this is all a part of this opportunity that we have to increase our immune function during this time while we're in quarantine <laughs>